Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to worship at the Covenant Presbyterian Church. It's a blessing to have you with us today. You can tell we're at our house down here in Larkspur, but behind us is a picture of the Vale Chapel in the front there, so it makes it feel a little bit more like home, and we certainly want to welcome each of you to this time of worship on this third Sunday of Advent, the Sunday when we're talking about peace. As we begin our time today, would you bow your heads and hearts and pray with me as we ask God's blessings on our time together. Heavenly Father, for the blessing of this day and for the occasion of your people joining together in worship, we give you praise and thanksgiving. We ask that you suit a special blessing to each one worshiping with us today, that you might touch us in our places of need and draw us closer to you through this holiday season. Lord, bless your word as it strengthens our hearts and lives, especially on this day, as we think about peace, your peace, not like the world gives, but one that comes from our eternal God, one made personal in our Lord and Savior, one that draws us closer to you. Amen. It is indeed a blessing to have you with us this morning. Um, as you can tell, my computer screen has gone off, so I'm going to fix that real quick. There we go. Our scripture message this morning comes from the book of Ephesians. I'll be reading from chapter 2. And as Paul is writing this to the church at Ephesus, you're going to hear the word of peace many different times today as we talk about peace on this third Sunday of Advent. The Bible says, For he, Jesus himself, is our peace, who has made the two one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility. By abolishing in his flesh the law with all its commandments and regulations, his purpose was to create in himself one new man out of the two, thus making peace. And in this one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross, by which he put to death their hostility. He came and he preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access to the Father by one Spirit. This is God's word and we pray he will add his blessings to the preaching of his word this morning. As we think about the topic of peace, we're reminded how important peace is. Sometimes we miss the uh, great understanding when we think of peace only as the absence of conflict. It's much more than the absence of conflict. Though we always like to live in a life kind of void of conflict as much as possible as we can. But we see that here in the scriptures when we read, He is our peace, in Christ we always experience some kind of internal turmoil. For the past two weeks we've been talking about hope, we've been talking about faith. And how often do we struggle in that area of hope? How often do we feel that we are lacking in faith? How often do the principles of God almost seem vapid in our own lives? And because of that, we find ourselves troubled over what's going on in our heart, our lives. Even Paul said that in the book of Romans. We've used this passage quite a bit. He said, the things I want to do, I don't do them. The things I don't want to do, those are the things I wind up doing. This is a conflict. We know in our heads, we know in our hearts, we know in our lives who God is and what he has done for us, especially through the person of Christ as we prepare to celebrate Christmas. And at the same time, we realize how far we may fall short, how times we deny, how sometimes we find ourselves wanting to give up. We need to see this very clearly right here. Our peace is not based on our own lives. It's not the absence of conflict. It's the presence of relationship. It's the presence of Christ because Jesus is our peace. He has made the two one. 
And the imagery that's being talked about here is about the Jew and the Gentile. Different backgrounds, different cultures, often different gods, different philosophies of life. But Christ tore down that barrier. So if we want to give peace any kind of a definition, we could call peace the absence of barriers in relationships. And I don't care how close we are, husbands, wives, children, family, friends, there are times that we have differences of opinion. There are times that we may argue. There's times that we may feel internal strife for one reason or the other. But when Christ is our peace and the barrier is removed, I see we just went away again. I'm just going to stop that one right now. We'll just keep it dark behind us at this moment. Regardless of how close we might be, differences occur but they don't have to become barriers because Jesus is our peace. He who made the two one destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall called hostility. By abolishing this in his flesh, uh, the law with its commandments and regulations, he purposed was for him to create in himself one new mankind out of the two, thus making peace. There will be differences in customs, differences in traditions, but peace, not the absence of conflict, becomes relationship through the absence of barriers. I've been reading a really delightful book about the Christmas season and how God has blessed us with the incarnation, how Christ came into this world. And it started off with a great chapter that says, if you want to send a message to someone, what is the best way to do that? Now, in our modern society, we may say text, we may say email, we may say a phone call, we may say face-to-face. -face. The truth is, and I agree with what the authors are saying on this, the best way to send a message is to embody the message in the messenger and send a person. When we go one to another, we live in integrity of who we are. The barriers are stripped away. We can be at peace even though we may have differences. That is the purpose that the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. The best way for God to show us how much He cares, how much He loves us, how much He desires for us to have peace was by sending His Son into this world. He appeared to the shepherds. He appeared to the wise men. He gave guidance to so many in this. And as we all come before the Savior. The presence of peace becomes evident in who we are because God uses our Savior to make one out of the two. The differences, the hostilities, are cast aside. In the book of Isaiah, it was prophesied that Jesus would be called the Prince of Peace, the Everlasting Father, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, you can almost sing the Hallelujah Chorus as we're thinking about it right now. What's happened, the barriers, the hostilities have been stripped away and relationship begins to flourish. God made us as relational people. He came and he preached peace to those who were far away as well as to those who were near. That's another reference to the Gentiles being far away historically, geographically, in distance, whereas the Jewish community was present in Israel, in Jerusalem, throughout the land. Jesus went primarily, first of all, to the Jews. Then the gospel went out to the Gentiles and stretched out to those who were far. And just in case you haven't figured this one out yet, most of us listening to this are Gentiles. We're not born into the Jewish tradition, and because of that, we, we are the others. We are the ones that are engrafted in because of God's blessings. He preached to us who were far away, for through him we both have access to the Father by one Spirit. Consequently, we are no longer foreigners or aliens, but fellow citizens with God's peoples, members of God's household, built on the foundation of the prophets and the apostles, with Christ Jesus himself being the head cornerstone. In him the whole building is joined together 
and rises to become a holy temple. And in him, we too are also being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives in us through his spirit. Breaking down the barriers, breaking down the hostility, brings us to the place where God indwells the hearts and lives of people. This is how we can know peace. Again, not the absence of conflict, but the presence of Christ. The presence of no hostility. The presence of no us and them, aliens and strangers, one family, one household, with Jesus Christ himself being the head. I have illuminated three candles behind me. I'm not sure if you can see those very well. The first one was the candle of hope, spoke of, spoken of by the prophets years ago, centuries before Christ came. The second candle was the candle of faith, which is really a life lived in the hope that we experience through Christ. And the third candle today, the one that we are looking at, is the candle of peace. And if we were in the chapel, you would see it would be the pink one that's being illuminated today as we talk about Christ's peace in our life. As a nation, we don't know peace very well. We talk about being one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. But the barrier of hostilities based on differences seems to be growing daily, weekly, annually. Sometimes that happens in families. Sometimes that happens in friendship relationships. Sometimes it even happens in our relationship with God. As the author of this beautiful Christmas book once was, read, was telling me, he said, doubts are not the end of the line for believers. Apathy would be the end for believers. If we get to the point where we have doubts and they don't trouble us, then we might need to examine ourselves again in our relationship with Christ. But if we have doubts, if we have questions, if we're coming to God, if we're praying, if we're seeking truth in his word, the presence of peace is there because there's no hostility. The first step towards hostility is truly the apathy that the authors were speaking about. Think about the story of the Good Samaritan. We don't often think of the Good Samaritan at Christmas time, but it's a fabulous story as a man is traveling from Jerusalem down to Jericho. And having driven on that road a couple of times when we were in Israel three years ago, it's a downhill run. It's kind of barren. Once you get through a few little t suburbs, there's really nothing much between uh, the edge of Jerusalem and Jericho except rugged terrain, hostile environments. And the scriptures tell us in that parable that a man was robbed and beaten by robbers. And he was left in a ditch to die. And we all know the story of the Good Samaritan. He came by and rescued this guy. But sometimes we don't always remember that there were three people who saw the man that day. One was a priest. One was a Levite. And the other was a Samaritan. An outsider. One of those people so to speak, in that day and time. And those of religious upbringing saw their internal value as so much more than everybody else that the priest and the Levite would not take time to help someone who was in need at that point. They had other things to do, better things to do. This was not my responsibility. Their religiousness started with apathy towards others, but grew into a wall of hostility, separating people and preventing us from actually helping and ministering in that situation. But it's the outsider, the good Samaritan, who shows us how life needs to be. He cared for the man. He took him to an inn. He paid the innkeeper to take care of him and restore him to health. And then he even told us, when I come back through here, and he would have because that's a main thoroughfare for commerce in that day and time, he goes, 
When I come back through here, I'll check back with you. And if I owe you more than what I've paid you, please let me know and I'll take care of it. This man needs help. That shows the absence of hostility. That is the peace of Christ working in our hearts and lives in an active living relationship with others who we may not even know that well. And all of this is possible because of who Christ is. For he himself is our peace. He has made the two into one, and he destroyed the barrier of hostility. He abolished in his flesh the law with commandments and regulations. His purpose was to create for himself one new dynamic. For through him, we both have access to the Father by one spirit. We are no longer strangers or aliens, but fellow citizens. That is the peace that Christ desires to give to us this Christmas season. This is the peace that Christ desires for us to live in each and every day of our life and our existence, not just during this particular season. But let it begin right now. Let our hearts and lives be changed and manifest God's love and His Spirit in such a way that we will go forward in relationship with our God, in relationship with each other, in sharing the truth of the gospel, in meeting the needs of people. For in doing so, we live out the life of peace. It was said Jesus will be called the Prince of Peace, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and of his rule there will be no end. As Isaiah put it, we are today manifest that extended kingdom. We're part of that life. We're part of that relationship, that dynamic and going forward. So my prayer for you, my prayer for me, is this holiday season that we will live in the peace of Christ, but more importantly, not only will we live in it, but we will share it. That is God's plan for his people today. That is his calling on this third Sunday of Advent putting peace in the midst of hope and faith, looking forward to love and joy as we continue in our Advent and Christmas celebrations. Pray with me as we ask the Prince of Peace to touch our hearts and lives as he's told us he would in Scripture. Again, Heavenly Father, your people come before you and we thank you for this blessing. We thank you for the gift of peace that's found in the person of our Lord and Savior. And Lord, we pray today that you would strip away all of ourself that stands in the way that becomes a barrier to thinking about hostilities or apathy. Let us shed off those garments that will hinder us. Let us set aside the sin that labors upon us. Let us run the race of faith that you called us to setting our eyes and our focus on Christ Jesus, our Lord, who is the author and perfecter of our faith, just as he is our peace. And Lord Jesus, may in this season, may your people worship you. May you receive that worship and may you be pleased. And may we, your people, grow in our relationship with you and in our relationship with others. For the blessing of peace, we thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen. I do pray that in this time, I know many of you will watch this on Sunday morning. Some of you may watch it on Saturday or some other day next week. But as we think about peace on this third Sunday, looking forward to, we're barely two weeks out from Christmas right now. It's coming on us very quickly. Let's not miss the significance of this season because of all the trappings our society puts on this season. Let us focus on the things of God. Let us focus on hope. Let us focus on faith. Let us focus on peace and joy and love. And now I pray that the peace of Christ that passes all understanding would guard your hearts and your lives and that God, our Heavenly Father, would bless you and keep you and lead us in the paths of his righteousness. Let us go from here today as his people, 
worshiping him in spirit and in truth, living in hope, living in faith, and being filled with the peace of Christ. I pray this blessing upon you as we close in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God's blessings upon you. Thank you again for being with us this morning. Go in peace. We will see you live and in person next Sunday in Vail and in Beaver Creek. That's December the 19th. We'll be live at 8 o'clock in Beaver Creek, 11 o'clock in Vail. Thanks again for worshiping with us. It is a joy to be with you this day. Go now in the peace of Christ. God's blessings upon you. Thank you.